Good evening and welcome to Release Your Wings. I'm Dan Bagley and I'm talking with Shireen Chada. And tonight's topic is dealing with crisis. So if you're dealing with any type of crisis, let's hope this is interesting to you. So Shireen, talk to me. What is a crisis in your definition of the word? I was thinking of two ways that you could look at crisis. A personal crisis, like I'm going through a divorce, or I'm mm -hmm. moving, or um, right. I'm having some internal changes is one aspect of it. And then the other aspect is uh, like an earthquake. I'm in an earthquake, or the hurricane is coming, or the right. oil spill is happening, and I'm really in the affected zone. Right. So let's, let's take them both. Uh, Let's start with the, the catastrophe in nature or what's happening there. What's the best way to perceive it, to think about it, to survive it in a spiritual as well as physical sense? You know, we have to embrace change. It's going to happen. There's something about whatever is going on right now, like earthquakes and oil spills and things like that, even though we could shift, blame game saying, oh, because of this or because of this. I feel it's kind of like destined. Ah. And that destiny, I feel you cannot really fight with it. You have to flow with it. And it's really much more easier if you flow with it. So that doesn't mean that you don't, uh, if you're in a mobile home, you don't tie your mobile home down or you don't close your windows in your house and, and try to survive, but it does mean you're not fighting the what is, is, is that? Is that yeah, you and you're not playing the blame game. Aha, uh -huh. so the blame game now, that's an interesting one because we see it all the time. Uh, especially in a crisis, right? Especially, especially let's say if crisis. I'm going through a divorce, there's right. so much of that going on. Ah, okay, that, that brings us really to the, the personal crisis. And so in that sense, how much of a personal crisis is just the ego screaming versus the spiritual, the soul somehow? I mean, is the soul playing the game too, or how does that work? Um, the soul really, the ego and the soul, they mm -hmm. like goodness, let's say goodness in the soul and ego in the soul, they're all kind of intermingled. Uh -huh. Just like if you have a pure gold and if you mix alloy like copper or something into the gold to make a earring, mm -hmm. you can't tell the difference between the copper and the gold. I see. The earring looks just gold. And so the soul looks like that, but there is that alloy of ego mixed into it. So if I'm going through a crisis, it could be the alloy talking, uh -huh. but I don't know the difference. So I'm experiencing sorrow either way. Uh -huh. Even if I know the alloy is talking or if the soul is talking, I don't know the difference. And so it's happening. But I feel that to be able to deal with this, Mm -hmm. um, not to go into the analysis of is it ego, is it this or that, right. but to really appreciate what's happening. Because I feel in a crisis that is one situation where we are really kind of um, thrown out of our comfort zones. Ah, well that raises something because a crisis is a way to transcend the limitations we thought we had before. Right. I mean, there's nothing new in our comfort zones. Right. There's no real growth in our comfort zones. Sitting, watching the same TV programs, the reruns through the summer, or the new fall lineup, or what have we, that's not really making us better people. However, well, it raises the question, do crises create the opportunity for us to be better? Yeah, or? it does. It provides an opportunity, but I have to take it. Uh -huh. I shouldn't take the road of blame. I should take the road of what is my personal growth here? Yeah. What, what is it that I can really do to better myself in this situation? And I really feel that in a situation like that, especially when I went to New Orleans right after Katrina, mm -hmm. I was noticing how everyone really was a hero. Yeah. And I heard so many stories. There was a whole story that was happened in on television, but there was a whole different story that was happening on the ground where really people, their whole, own greatness really emerged. Uh -huh. And so, because that they were responding to a crisis, which I can uh, talk about responsibility in a crisis. Yeah. And so, um, 
in that kind of response, which is the responsibility, is that kind of response in a crisis is that your goodness, your greatness emerges. Uh -huh. And so to be able to see that, to be able to go with that, to be able to recognize the beauty, the appreciation of what's happening. Yeah. So there's an old Zen story of a fellow being chased by tigers. And as he's running, he falls over the edge of a cliff and is on his way down, he grabs onto a vine and is holding there. But he's halfway down, so he can't climb up because the tigers are looking down. And down below, there are tigers. And it, the vine is about to give. And he looks over and he sees strawberries, wild strawberries growing out of the side of the mountain. And he tastes them and goes, ooh, how delicious. So within what I'm hearing you say, even in the moment of crisis, there should be the ability to taste the deliciousness of life. Yeah. Boy, right. that's a tough one. <laughs> no, actually, maybe it's our only road to sanity. Ah, <laughs> maybe nice. it was his only road to sanity to taste the strawberries. Yeah. What else is he going to do in that situation? Exactly. <laughs> he is locked into the here and the now, <laughs> and if he's looking at the past, blaming, I should have, you know, whatever, or someone should have gotten rid of the tigers, or look the future, which in the story is he's going to fall and die, then he can't enjoy the strawberries. Well, I guess on a timeline, we're all in that we're all off that cliff. Yeah, I mean, right. Right now is yeah. a time when we are all off that cliff. Yeah, and so here and now and appreciation, while we try to figure out a way to get up or down safely, is, is a good thing. Yeah, and also this whole aspect of figuring it out yeah. um, happens so much better in a community. Mm -hmm. And I share such beautiful stories about Haiti with yeah. the earthquake and all of that. And I've never really seen people come together like they have come together for eight Haiti. Yeah. So you do hear all of the stories and all of that's going on, but also there's this other aspect of human life. And I feel that is what is resilience, mm -hmm. is that I'm able to look at that beauty and I'm able to live on. Well, in a funny way, just like muscles grow stronger with resistance, muscles grow where they're basically the fiber is stretched to the breaking point but not to the point that it tears and then it repairs itself and is stronger perhaps that's what crisis does for us yeah at a at a spiritual psychological mental toughness area we just get better is that uh, yeah not only we do get better and i feel not only we get better but we appreciate life more. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's yeah. not just a learning. I yes. feel it is a learning that comes with a lot of joy. So the glass half empty, half full, then as you know, we're looking at the good side of life a little bit easier than the empty side of life. I've heard a lot of people who have been through a crisis and they always say that was the best thing that happened to right. me. So right. it's how you really use it. Mm -hmm. You can use it to grow, to, to fly, or you can use it to put yourself in a hole. Exactly. And so often we'll look back, my, my older son, ha who had a number of heart surgeries, and so he says, I wouldn't wish it, and faced death at 16, uh, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. The way I can see the world now, having thought at that young age, I was probably going to be a goner. Uh, makes everything else all the sweeter. All right. So within that context then, should we embrace crisis or should we just work our way through it? Um, uh, embrace it if it comes, but I don't think we should invite it. Ah, <laughs> nice. So the, uh, if a crisis is coming, we shouldn't encourage it. We shouldn't ask it to stay with us for some long time. Which also raises to me the issue that sometimes I feel there are some people walking around waiting for a crisis to happen in their lives. I've always expected the worst and I've never been disappointed kind of attitude. Yeah, but also I feel you see what you really are looking for. Ah. So if people are really looking for it, that's what you see because that's where your awareness is yeah. because we not now i feel and it's a really bad habit most of us have is the habit of honing in on what's wrong uh -huh. and not the appreciation of what's right yeah. and so i love this zen story you were just talking about because he was appreciating the strawberries and not worrying about right. the die crop put out exactly 
So, so, so maybe that's the key to crisis is to say, if I work it right, this will pass and it will pass leaving me potentially stronger, if nothing more, psychologically stronger than I would have been before. Yeah, so many gifts come with it. Mm -hmm. So many psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. I know many, many people who have really become very spiritual, or really turned to who they are in a situation of crisis. Yeah. So it's fabulous that we are um, faced with it. But I wouldn't invite it. I wouldn't say, hey, earthquake, come around so yeah. I can <laughs> see if I am <laughs> Because gonna... thoughts may just be creative. <laughs> not saying that a thought can make an earthquake, but I'm not going to chance it. I'd rather expect the best and be surprised if I don't get it right. than expect the worst and be surprised if I do. Uh, because you sort of do have some way of looking at it or accepting things. So in the sense of crisis also, I'm hearing something that sometimes a breakdown and a breakthrough really are two sides of the same coin. In other words, the breakdown of who I thought I was opens the way for a breakthrough of my new spiritual development of the stronger, more resilient self. My new identity. My new identity. And so if let's say uh, before, let's say a personal crisis, yeah. like a divorce. So I could have been identifying myself as this, uh, let's take me as an example, I could have been identifying myself as this married woman, this wife, mm -hmm. all of those things. But that's not my eternal spiritual identity. Yeah. That's just the identity in that situation. So maybe the divorce was good for me because then I was able to get out of that I, that really limiting identity that I identified myself with and go with this eternal spiritual identity which really is unlimited, which really makes you fly. So that ability to let go of an identity, let's put it to where being male or female, a high school athlete, in, in that time you go, oh, this is who I am. But if you don't let go of it at some point, that doesn't stay forever. I mean, most don't make it to college athletes or professional a athletics, but if that's your last hurrah of sorts, it's probably not particularly good. So lo the crisis of losing that identity might be a breakthrough for you. Right. You know, there's an important aspect when you were talking about the athlete, I was thinking, is that it, it, life is never that my best years are in the past. Yeah. My best years are right now and in the future. Mm-hmm. And so even if you're in your 90s, you can still say these are good years, these are good moments, moment the, this by is moment. The, yes, this is the best time. Yeah. Because I have the luxury of experience, I have the luxury of knowing myself, which is very important, understanding yeah. myself. And also I have the luxury of knowing that whatever is to come is going to be even better. You know, there's some research on that I read recently that uh, being in one's 70s as opposed to one's 40s uh, and 50s even uh, is much happier for most people. That in spite of not being able to do as many things and uh, part of it's that wisdom, part of it is out of the striving game perhaps. Youth is overrated. Yeah, it's overrated. Yeah, easy to see. Look at you. <laughs> You're still young. No, I, uh, compared to, let's say, in my 20s, right? I think I'm happier now. Yeah. Because I remember going through a lot of personal um, growth and a lot of uh, figuring out myself and all of that. And really, experience has something to say. Yeah. Well, in, in those earlier years, we're jockeying for position a little bit more. And uh, probably with many people, it continues up longer than you. So you've been a BK for a number of years now, so you're mellowing out. But truth be known, it should, it should be getting a little tougher for you on those issues. <laughs> no, actually, I'm enjoying myself. Okay, good. Then just because you're doing it not wrong, you're not doing it wrong, you're doing absolutely right. And that may be the piece of crisis that no matter what we're faced with, to know that it isn't just what's happening outside in, but what really is what's happening on the inside that makes it more bearable, a learning experience, a growth experience, a breakthrough experience. And I feel that is the time to practice stillness. Ah. 
And in that moment, when I'm in the crisis moment, it's the time to practice stillness. <laughs> and it, yeah. it's the stillness that is going to see me through. But also, I feel that many times we wait for a crisis to ask for divine intervention or do all of these things. But to really be wise mm -hmm. and keep doing it. So when you come to it, then it's not such a big shock. Ah, very nice. So what you're telling us is the time to build your spiritual muscles is maybe before the crisis, before you absolutely need extra help. Yeah, and then you really enjoy it. Yeah. Then it's not such a break or breakthrough moment. Yeah, this too will pass and I will survive and maybe even thrive through it. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. And thank you for joining us this evening. I hope you've enjoyed this.